in a world filled with war, hate, suffering, and Justin Bieber. Two guys fix it all with a battle about a movie. One film, two opinions, one coin, two sides. They feud. You decide. It's time for Film Feud. Hey, 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 hey. Welcome to Film Feud. Welcome, guys. Welcome to the podcast where we debate whether top-rated movies should be top-rated. I'm Vidur. Uh-uh. Oh, yeah. Uh-uh. Oh, yeah. I'm Vikram. <laughs> Thanks, Vikram. Thanks for that. Was that the Rocky theme song? Not yet, but I'm going to throw that baby up so many times in this episode. So why don't you explain to the good folk what we're doing here? We choose a movie from the IMDb Top 250 at random uh-huh. with the help of our film feud wheel. Uh-huh. And then we toss a coin and... Um, Not just any coin. Oh, the film feud coin. And then we feud. And then we feud. That's right. So this week's episode is Rocky. Rocky, the original 1976 underdog sports boxing slice Stallone oh, motion picture. Wait, wait, wait. I thought this was 1981 Sanjay Dutt. Rocky. Oh, dude. I wish it was that Rocky. I'd love to feud over that Rocky. I would defend that shit to death. <laughs> really? You're a fan? Sanjay in his prime, man. <laughs> that was his first movie. It's not even his prime. Why do I know so much about Sanjay Dutt? Why do you know so much <laughs> about know, 1980s I, Bollywood I, I movies? I do not know. I do not know. I'm so sorry. I'm very impressed. I've never wanted you more. <laughs> <laughs> Sanjay that Rocky Mera Naam. Yeah, just kidding, guys. This is Rocky Sylvester Stallone. Ayo, Vaidriya. A movie I'm looking forward to watching for the first time. What were you doing when I you just, were in school? I just am more into the whole, you know, like indie <laughs> film festival scene at the time. So I just never caught it. Man, I just can't believe you haven't seen the movie. Whatever, man. That's great. This is why I love this podcast. I get to watch this movie now. Awesome. Let's do it. Let's toss this coin and figure out which side I'm going to be for this movie that I haven't seen. So in the coin toss, heads is for and tails is against. And this episode, Vidur will be tossing the coin. Let's do this. It's Tails. <laughs> Was that a Rocky Blast? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just happy I've, I'm arguing for this movie. I'm actually a fan. I actually do know that reference, at least. Yeah, I think, I think anyone who hasn't even heard of Rocky probably knows that reference. It's probably stupid when it's in the context of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's begun, so it begins... <laughs> Well, there must be a reason I haven't seen it. If it was amazing, I must have seen it. Uh-huh. Just like Raging Bull. Ah, uh, I knew you'd bring that up. <laughs> Why must you embarrass me in front of our listeners? I will never let that one go Unle- until we get Raging Bull. And if you get tales in that, that'll be so much fun. All these hypotheticals, uh-huh. I don't give a shit about. Right? You only facts and what's happening in front of you and all of that. Is that I'm against Rocky and I'm super glad. <laughs> I'm also pretty glad I'm for the movie and uh, I'm pretty excited about the episode. But before we jump in and watch the movie, do you want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors this week? For sure. Our sponsor this week, I mean, what do I even say? I'm staring at it right now. Our sponsor this week, Pop Filters. Pop Filters. Pop Filters are so crucial to our podcast. They actually let our purrs be purrs and our burrs be burrs. They remove what's known as plosives and... They're actually sponsoring this episode. Knowledge bombs. Pop, 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 pop. Just to highlight how important this sponsor is, I am now going to do a rendition of the same tune, unspecified tune. I don't know what I was singing there. Just because you say unspecified doesn't mean we don't get copyright strapped. Is that not how it works? No. I couldn't have just mistakenly hummed a tune. And claim it to be an original? Whatever. My point is, I want our listeners to know how important our sponsor is. Right. By removing the pop filter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pop, 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 p
of the truck that ran over your face. That was great. That oh, is, man. I got to use oh, that insult. I wish I'd so seen this good. movie ages ago just so I could have lived my life using that insult. <laughs> right, right. It's too good. <laughs> Dude, these, these like, like Philadelphia slum dudes are so cool dude they're like they're awesome yeah i love that line there are a few good lines uh, uh mickey calls rocky a tomato <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, and then i've been missing out on so many yeah, good dude, slams mickey's, mickey's trust me you haven't seen two three four or five mickey's not in all of them but then the ones mickey's in including this one he's amazing because his his comebacks to you or his insults are just so fucking hilarious man and that one time when Rocky goes and meets Mickey because some dude from Apollo Creed's camp came to meet Mickey about Rocky and then they have that note left with him. Oh, the sparring partner thing. Yeah, and then and then Mickey's like, oh, they probably want you to be his sparring partner and Rocky takes the note and he's like, they probably want me to be the sparring partner. And <laughs> yeah, Mickey just, just, just like turns around. He's like, I already said that, you dumb Dago. <laughs> yeah, what, what is that? What's a Dago? A Dago's, I had to look that up uh, post the movie. It's, prob- it's like an offensive word for an Italian speaking person or something like that. Oh. But huh. Mickey's insane. He's so good. Uh, let's just take a f***ing <laughs> break here. What the f*** is this going on? How do we just start talking about the only few good lines in this movie? This no, movie no. was so <laughs> underwhelming. What have people been talking about for 40 years, man? Are you serious? I mean, I just want to touch upon another line when... Answer my question first. Right. Where the hell uh-huh. was Eye of the Tiger? It's I Eye of the Tiger is in the second movie, you douche. Why do why don't people say that? Why don't people say like, oh, I have the tiger, Rocky too? Everybody goes like, oh, I have the tiger. Oh yeah, Rocky, Rocky. This movie has something that's better than I have the tiger. Pa 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 pa. Not I of the tiger, tiger. <laughs> Dude, I was waiting the whole movie. I had actually caught like the training montage at some point in my life, maybe like fifteen years ago in Star Movies or something. So I was familiar with that song. Didn't hit me that hard. Wait, wait, wait. That's the only time you've heard that song. That song has been repeated in every sports movie prep training sort of situation ever, including fucking Family Guy and stuff like that as well. Which brings me to another important point. This is not even the best such sports movie I watched. I understand it's probably one of the earliest ones, but you know, better movies came and built upon the shoulder of this midget. (laughs) For example? For example? Mm Mm-hmm. I've come armed with an example. Sure. But I truly do believe this as the best movie out, in this man. genre. Just spit it out. The great movie, the best underdog movie ever, <laughs> made by the same director. Do not say Karate Kid. Karate Kid. Oh, man. It's so good. Oh, we'll man. get into it because I think there's a lot lacking in the script of this movie. But uh-huh. yeah, it's not even the best underdog movie. It's not even the best sports movie. It's a movie. It's a solid 4.5. <laughs> and 5 if you're in that place in life where you need this. And maybe a six if you're from Philadelphia. I have so much to say here that I'm just going to shoot my load on your face super early. (laughs) Karate Kid did it better. (laughs) Real Steel did it better. (laughs) F***ing Apne did it better. (laughs) Starring Sunny, Bobby and Dharmendra Diol. (laughs) F*** that dude, even Sultan did it better. And I haven't seen Dangal, but I bet Dangal does it better. Give me a second to gather myself right now, please. <laughs> While you're gathering yourself, I just want to point out that Apne, even though you're laughing, oh, firstly, it had Katrina Kaif, much hotter than Adrian. Apne whatever. had Katrina Kaif in it? Oh, what a beauty. <laughs> what a beaut, huh? And Bobby Diol does the exact same Rocky push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> what an homage. <laughs> oh, oh. I mean, you started losing me at Apne, beyond which... Uh, what about Real Steel? There are no nanobots, there are no robots in Rocky. You know what this movie could have used? Robots. <laughs> you know, just because you haven't seen Rocky 4, um, he has a, a robot slash butler <laughs> in Rocky 4. Are you f***ing with me now? No, I'm not. No way. I'm not, I'm not. He's basically by Rocky 4, he's literally like Floyd May- Mayweather times 100 
times whatever rich okay he's like super rich so he has a robot butler he actually has a robot who's like hello mr balboa or something like that i remember a robot in his house <laughs> it's amazing point Coming, proven no and you said rocky 4 is the best in the franchise no 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 i mean, i said rocky 4 is the most commercial in the franchise rocky is the best movie in the franchise hands down and maybe creed according to me creed comes in a second close not a close second but it comes in second dude f- that This movie was so underwhelming. I'm glad I didn't watch it when I was even more hyped up in my earlier years. I don't even see how you're going to win this feud. I mean, you don't stand a chance. I'm like the Apollo Creed of this feud. <laughs> <laughs> you can go the distance, but you can't win, son. <laughs> Apollo Creed, because he hasn't seen any of the Rocky movies, Apollo Creed becomes Rocky's bitch. Who is he based on, Ali? Apollo Creed? Yeah. Apparently more of Joe Frazier than Ali, but... I mean they try to sort of pick elements from both try to make this whole superhuman sort of a boxer like beyond everything really commercial really flamboyant in your face sort of a fighter so there are elements from Ali but it's more based on Frazier It was weird because he was clearly the antagonist of the movie in a way but not really they didn't even set him up he was definitely a one dimensional character for sure I don't get that I don't get how this movie won the Oscars that it did or how it even got nominated for best screenplay that's unbelievable this is the epitome of a rags to riches story right it and the way it's written it's so authentic the entire time you're watching the movie a because of stallone's acting and the way it's directed it just seems so authentic the dialogues are so authentic it just feels like someone real it just feels like something real is actually unfolding in front of your eyes rather than a movie i know movie. they're trying really hard for that to be the case and especially the first half which by the way is way too long like 55 minutes Or you It's just want the fighting to start boom like movie starts fighting start. No, I want it to be a well-paced, well-structured movie. The first half is way too long, the second half is way too rushed. I mean, I get it the montages are, are great, but I mean not really. And the third act is like a 12-minute fight. I mean, maybe even less. I didn't really time it to perfection. It's all messed up. I can't believe this movie was nominated and I think we've all heard the back story. I looked a little bit more into it about how this movie was written. Right. I'll let you expand on that, but from what I know this movie was written somewhere between 20 hours to 3 days. Yeah, it shows, bro. It shows. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was more the whole structure of the script that was written in 3 days and that was post this match, uh, this boxing match that Stallone happened to watch between Ali and uh, this relatively unknown boxer Chuck Webner and uh, Ali was the man at that time right and this chuck webner guy actually took him to 15 rounds which is pretty much what happens in this movie right like an underdog unknown sort of a boxer takes there the- we go no originality even there's so much originality because it's actually stallone's life story in a way wait 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 again we'll get into the life story but i'm definitely not granting you originality there's plenty of it i concede in terms of the back story but originality i mean this story is as contrived as it gets yes it's rags to riches it's the american dream But like he just gets a shot because they randomly decide somebody needs a shot for his nickname. Why didn't they flesh that out? All the other movies I mentioned, Real Steel, Karate Kid, people earn their shot. They either get put into a situation or they are yearning for that shot and then they actually build their way to it. It's not like, "Oh, scriptwriter, how will this underdog fight the Ali of the world?" Just, you know, cause <laughs> so um uh, just to give you a lowdown on the world of boxing, that's at least up until maybe the mid 90s that's how it used to happen mostly a fight was decided way in advance and preparations for that not just in today's standards preparation means media and money and commercials and stuff like that but preparation in terms of the fight the training and stuff like that used to start a few months before the fight at least and in this situation because he's the world champion he would not want an actual challenger to challenge him in that situation because he's been prepping for that other fighter this entire time. Yeah, okay, so what? That's how reality sometimes goes it seems, but that still doesn't make it cinematic. That doesn't make it any more interesting for the character to get to that place. Like I said, all the other movies, I actually was more invested in their stories. In this it's like, oh, the American dream is you might win a lottery one day if you're a boxer. Uh, so you're focusing way too much on a weakness in the script. No, the legitimacy of him getting the shot and how he got it. No, which I'm is not actually I actually do want to stop you there because what I'm saying is that it's not a good screenwriting decision to have that happen. I I it may be legitimate in real life. No, I mean you you're comparing it to the karate kid and what was the other thing? I don't even know. I don't even care. Because of how they earned their shot or whatever. That's not the situation here. The first half up until the 55 minutes that you mentioned 
that entire part is to talk about or show what Rocky's life is, how he's a bum in the neighborhood, the stuff that he keeps repeating and how he wants to, how how his living situation is temporary, how he's been busting his balls for like six years in the boxing ring and not being going anywhere. And it was just to show his backstory and his situation at that point of time. Sure, I grant it. I mean, honestly, if that if the movie took a turn for something else over there, if he became, let's say he got into really deep with Gazo, the guy he was a loan collector for, or he went on to do something else, like maybe he took a dark turn or something. I mean, all of that would be more interesting. But handing this was bad writing. Anyway, that's not even my only example. But I want to I want to continue on that a little bit. You were, you were trying to create routes that this movie could have taken, which would have maybe made it go down a different path, which is not the point here. They, they actually mention in the movie how Mickey mentions that it's freak luck, the situation that Rocky's in, because it's actually a situation that boxers do find themselves in. So that's what happens to Rocky. And the whole point of the movie is A, to show Rocky's situation before that fight and to show Rocky's situ- preparation Going into that fight, his his um, relationship with Adrian, his relationship with Polly, his relationship with Mickey, and it's it's less of a boxing story then, right? It's not an out and out boxing story like a southpaw or something like that. It's it's a story about someone's life changing because of boxing. Yeah, I get it. Karate Kid ends up being about a girl and Real Steel about a kid and Goodwill Hunting about a girl as well and a friendship. Because, yeah, you can't do straight boxing, right? Otherwise, it would just be a sports boring story. So, yeah, he threw that in there. I mean, what's interesting here is how Stallone wrote the script. I have to grant that it's a great underdog story. When paired with the real-life situation of Stallone, it makes for a great story. Guy sold his dog three days before writing the script, dude. Can you believe that? He sold his dog and he said that I sold my dog to anyone who would buy it because I didn't have money to buy dog food for my dog. I looked into that a little more. I heard Tony Robbins talk about it because Sly is his friend, quote-unquote. Oh, really? And he said that he got so desperate, uh, as you're mentioning, that he went and stood outside a liquor store with right, his dog. right. And just waited for anybody to show up to buy it. And then eventually said, I'll I'll give my dog to you for $50. And ended up having to sell him for 25 25, And his dog yeah. was the one thing he loved in the world. Because his relationship with his wife wasn't that good. Right. He loved the unconditional love. Right. And yeah, he, like you said, he sold it. And he says that I remember walking away crying from that liquor store after selling my dog. That's it's, so f***ed up. It's so messed up, dude. Just imagine that situation. And before that dog selling situation, apparently he used to steal jewelry from his wife and sell it. Right to sort of just fund his living. He's, he slept on the New York bus station for three days straight. It, it just, it's, this is Stallone's story through and through and it shows in the movie. The realism shows and it's brilliant. That's true. He didn't want to give up on his dream and so he just stuck with it and it really worked out for him. I mean, the happy news is that he sold the script for, I think the amount was like $35,000 mm-hmm. and then he went back to the liquor store and waited for three days Right, to right. see if the guy would come back with his dog. And on the third day, the guy did. And then he tried to buy the dog back. It had been a while, so the guy didn't want to give him back. Mm-hmm. So he said, I'll give you $100, I'll give you $500, and ended up paying what I believe was $15,000 out of the $35,000 oh, he'd gotten serious? to get his dog back. And the dog was the dog in the movie. Oh, um, that's Butkus? Oh, uh, you're Butkus. Hey, oh, you're Butkus. Oh, man, that's... Oh, I didn't know Butkus was the dog. This is insane. And the fact that he was adamant about playing the lead role in the movie is so important because a lot of studios were like, we're going to put, I don't know, Robert Redford or Burt Reynolds or someone. And Ryan like, O'Neill, I heard, was one of the ones. Yeah, and then h- him just being adamant about it. And the only reason the movie would go through was that if he's playing, the budget of the movie has to be one million or less. Uh-huh. And they managed to keep it that. And f- A, dude, it grossed like what? 200 million, 300 million or something? Yeah, highest grossing movie of 1976. That's what? wild. That's totally wild. And what? I mean, not to mention what it did for his career. But that actually you know honestly i think sylvester stallone's career sort of took a downturn post that in terms of acting i think that was his best acting best writing whatever the fuck it was because beyond that he just became like a hollywood action star see that's the thing you are somehow thinking stallone killed it in this movie and then everything else he sucked in that's not true he didn't really kill it in this movie this movie as a whole and the package and the story makes you feel like he killed it he really wasn't that good. I mean, he's a fresh actor. That's okay. He was like basically his first role. Whenever the script needed him to be all Philadelphia slum, he did a pretty good job. Whenever the script needed him to display any other emotion except for the same face he was displaying throughout the first half, you could tell he was acting. You could tell he's facing a camera, he's acting. And even as Philadelphia has accent, it's like, I felt like it was Rodney Dangerfield, you know, oh, I don't get no respect, you know what I mean, you know? <laughs> and then the best data point to support what you're saying, he is actually... The highest nominated actor for the Golden Raspberry Awards, the Razzies. 
He's been nominated. But yeah, because he's done like the Expendables, Expendables two thirty times. Yeah, I don't, I Three, don't, I do not doubt zero. that at all. I do not doubt that at all. They created a special Worst Actor of the Century award in two thousand for Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> 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 That's fine. That that does not bother me at all. It doesn't mean that the worst actor of two thousand or twentieth century could not have done one good movie, and this was it. Okay, but I mean, other acting wasn't that good too. Mickey, I guess, was okay. Polly, dude, Polly was so good. Polly sucked. Polly, whenever Polly was acting drunk, it I thought he was actually drunk. Polly was absurd. Polly was like <laughs> some like uh, high school level theater actor who's just <laughs> giving it his soul in every scene, so he gets laid when the play is actually out. Yeah, and what about uh, Miss Corleone? Miss Corleone, Talia Shire, she was pretty good. She was actually pretty good. But this is a mix between the acting and the writing. Really, is that the character was surprisingly one note like she did a lot with that one note she actually had an arc because it's like they threw in the movie she's all that starring freddie prince jr what? into the movie rocky have you seen she's all that of course not what the f- are you talking about why is why are we talking about she's all that it's a rom-com from the golden era of rom-coms where freddie <laughs> prince jr transforms the school nerd i forget what her real name is into some like uh into the prom queen uh, as a dare and then eventually falls for her yeah i felt it was the same way it's like he's just showering her with attention and stuff in the beginning of the movie uh-huh. and he's making up these like cutesy little jokes morning and evening adrian is kind of like the super nerd like doesn't op- let her hair out wears glasses and stuff you mean shy shy is the word she's shy that's right right and then rocky just showers her with attention and then eventually like when he finally goes on the first date with her mhm this bears mentioning Firstly, he she's all that, sir, which is to say that he says that she should take off her glasses and let her hair down. So sexist. But then he doesn't let her leave the apartment. <laughs> that is so f***ed <laughs> up. Tell me you didn't find that f***ed <laughs> up. <laughs> I think you just skipped over everything that happened before that scene. Tell me you didn't find that f***ed <laughs> up. <laughs> Not as f***ed up as you did. A, because I don't know what she's, he, she's all that or her, whatever the fuck that is makes me want to slash not want to watch that movie do Just not watch <laughs> okay. she's all that all right. you already watched it <laughs> thanks but um i think you just also glossed over everything that happened before that scene because you're making it sound like a rape sort of situation you said the r word i didn't <laughs> need to when in in reality it was more of she's super shy but she's still into him and She's there on her own will. Dude, if a girl says she wants to leave, you let her f***ing leave. <laughs> <laughs> you do not put your giant bicep on the door <laughs> and then let a camera shoot between the bicep arch <laughs> into her face, being scared as shit. Yeah, yeah. But then, I mean, throughout the movie, you see that that was the right thing to do. That being said, I will concede. Great acting. <laughs> Talia Shahid acted really well. And I've always liked her acting in uh, Godfather as well. Both yeah. in, in fact, she's the one in all three Godfather movies. It's great. Right. She's, she's yeah. And also before the scene that you're talking about, the whole ice skating rink scene, I just wanted to mention something about that because this movie was on such a tight budget, right? These guys could not afford um, the extras. Or, so the original plan was to shoot a scene during the day in an ice rink and have hire all of the people there as extras. But these guys were on such a tight budget, they actually had to hire the rink at night because they couldn't afford to hire the extras. Oh, so, did they do it just like they do it in the movie? They just went up to the guy and they're like, <laughs> $10 for 10 minutes, please. No, of course not. That guy was an actor and everything was staged. But then just to lower the cost... Thanks for actually clarifying <laughs> that, you dick. <laughs> just wanted to make sure, just wanted to make sure. And then that's the reason why they did it at night. And stuff like that, like talking a little bit more about how they had to work within budget. So if you remember the scene just before the fight where Rocky goes to the arena. Yeah. And then there's his... Uh, big poster hanging and then in the poster he's actually wearing red shorts with white stripes right but in the fight he's actually wearing white shorts with red stripes jesus dude this isn't 2001 a space odyssey <laughs> the other way around they actually had to bake that scene in because they realized that they actually got his shorts uh white with red right oh and it was the other way around in the poster so they baked that scene in when he actually clarifies to the presenter he's like but i'm not wearing those shorts and he's like it doesn't really matter does it and that scene comes off so well it comes off so naturally like you wouldn't know that it was a goof up all right that's cool they bake it in the character and also they should have realized it doesn't really matter does it they it does just... i mean i mean it's an oscar winning movie and there are people out there who who like dissect movies like crazy the other thing that his robe is really big before the fight 
and he actually uses that and he says hey adrian don't you think this role is big for me she's like best of luck rocky so that was because they didn't have the production budget for a nicer robe no so they they got the robe made it came out big they didn't have the timeline slash the budget to get another robe made so they just went with it that's brilliant that's so good it just adds so much to the movie all right interesting interesting production of the movie i'll grant you that i mean the movie looks beyond its 1 million budget perhaps because of all the things you said and definitely because of the last scene although i have to say the fight i feel like they don't make it last long because of the production budget do you think that's right um Well no cuz then if they would have shown a 15 round fight it would just been like two and a half hours right there right Well they show him surviving round 1 and then they just jump to like 7 and then no, 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 in the second go, to to be super clear they go till round they show two rounds and then 3 5 7 they just go odd numbers up until like 13 or something They definitely don't pause between 3 5 and 7 No no and stuff. they, they just, just go... it's just a lady showing round 3 round 5 round 7 round. Obviously yeah. do you know how long these rounds are Of course I know that they're not going to show a full fight but I bet I haven't seen too many boxing movies particularly the Rocky Creed I mean, and Raging Bull How many boxing matches have you seen All I right. think it's a more important question No here. it's not the more important question the point is that in other boxing movies they would make the fight last longer because of course the tension builds longer Because they those really are those out. are those are action movies those those aren't movie movies Okay fair enough I felt if the fight lasted longer it would be a little more believable I mean the whole movie is hinging on this fight and it's too short and the tension doesn't build you don't even see him close to being out or anything like that i mean where's where's the roller coaster ride that my emotions are supposed to go for <laughs> you're expecting a popcorn masala entertainer aren't you no i'm expecting a rags to riches underdog sports movie again karate kid did it better <laughs> he learned his first lesson I mean dude Mr Miyagi comes in teaches this guy one kick he breaks his leg and he kills the other guy That's after the ups and downs he's going up he's going up he's going up and then he has that moment where he's all is lost where is the all is lost moment again this is a mix of the writing and the direction and I cannot believe he won the best director Oscar for this movie John Avildsen I think people may rest in peace by the way he died just a few days ago right. but uh I think people got caught up in just this feel good factor of this contrived somewhat hacky Although one of the earliest hacky sports underdog story, right? I feel like because of all of the sports movies that you've seen over the '90s and 2000s and maybe even the '80s, you have a certain template of a sport movie in mind, which is which is not the way you should view this movie because this movie was a one of the original sports movies, right? It, there were not too many before this which were so good. in terms of having a story having a background rather than just focusing on the sport or the final match or bout or whatever it is sure i'll grant that it was probably a new thing at the time but you know maybe not I'll... just a new thing it's this this movie is the movie on top of which all other sports movies apart from maybe a raging bull but uh, all of the other sports movies were sort of built on because all of the other sports movies that you see now or have seen over the past have focused more on the whole popcorn entertainment style of focusing on the sport seeing the ups and downs within the sport the match the final match the prep and then seeing that final match and obviously most of the time having a happy ending to it this movie dispels all of those theories and still comes out on top as a great fucking movie because it focuses on rocky on rocky's story from being a bum and being and getting up Six years in a row, getting punched in the face, stitches here, bruises there, and still coming out on top, even though he still doesn't win the final match. You're putting a lot in the movie that it didn't have, dude. I mean, yeah, I get it. He was a bum and stuff. There was so much lacking. Uh, I just want to close out the loop on a, on a few things. I mean, the direction, like even in the first five minutes itself, the direction is so in your face. Like in the first five minutes of the movie, at some point, he's looking at this photo on the mirror, and then the camera just starts zooming into the photo. I mean that kind of stuff just would not fly. If you saw that movie with just the same color palette that you used to in modern film, you'd be like this is absurd. This is just terrible directing. Do you think that's because of the way f- most films are these days rather than not just good films but most films and then because of just repeated exposure to films like that day in and day out we just sort of feel that like this is the way to direct and this is the way not to direct? No, I think it's pretty clear John Avildsen used this as a playground to practice and then fixed it all in the karate kid. I think for the most part the craft really evolves in the right direction. So, I felt it was lacking. I I bet that's not the case with Creed and if you compare Creed to Rocky you'll find that you probably prefer the modern filmmaking version of it. Personally, I still prefer Rocky over Creed. Are you sure? Does nobody go Adrian in the movie? 
I don't want to spoil the movie for you since you haven't seen it. I highly recommend you just take a look at Creed. You don't need to watch any of the Rockies. Maybe I'm Rocky not going to watch any of the Rockies at least for a long time because this movie was so underwhelming. Oh, man. But while we're talking about Adrian. <laughs> yo, Adrian. Hey, yo, Adrian. You're a much better Rocky Blaster <laughs> than I am. I've, I've, I've Rocky Blasted a lot in my just life. Just tell me this. Yo. Why is he even yelling Adrian at the end? What is the conflict? I'd heard of this Adrian reference, well, throughout my life, really. And I figured, just like maybe Goodwill Hunting, where she goes away, or, uh, for instance, in uh, Rounders, when she leaves him, or so many other movies where this, like, woman arc or son arc is going on, the person leaves, right? I probably thought halfway through the movie what's going to happen is that Adrian will not want him to fight because he's going to die. And she's going to say, it's either me or the fight. So he goes for the fight and then he's like, Adrian. What is the big deal here? They actually shot an alternate ending to the movie. Oh, really? Yeah. The alternate ending was that he gets disillusioned by the world of boxing. And uh, they sort of slowly built towards that during the movie. If you remember the whole scene where he goes to the arena just before the match. And uh, he comes back to his room and he tells Adrian, I don't want to do this anymore or something like that. Um, And the alternate ending is he actually throws the fight. And him and Adrian just walk out of the arena or some, like something along those lines. So much better. Right? So much better. Because then there's like this emotional arc and then all the Adrian interaction makes sense. The movie actually becomes about Adrian. I don't know why people bought into this. Yo, Adrian. It's just because of the way Stallone said it with his uh, left mouth thingamajig. <laughs> of course, that is that is one way because of the uniqueness of his delivery. and But... It made no sense. He might as well have been yelling, yo, Polly. He might as well have been yelling, yo, Butkus. <laughs> that would have made no sense. Adrian was just right uh, there. What's she going to do? Not come and hug him when he wins the fight? Butkus. Butkus. <laughs> Everybody mean, Butkus Stallone after this movie for some reason. <laughs> I think it made perfect sense because if you notice, like immediately post the fight uh, when him and uh, Apollo Creed are locked in and they're like, no rematch. And he's like, I don't want one. I don't want one, right? Because that match drained the shit out of both of them. And... The whole build up to in the movie for the fight for Rocky was that, you know, I've I've never wanted to be the bum. I've always wanted to make it big, but now he's having second thoughts and he doesn't he's just disillusioned by the by the world of boxing and he's found this new relationship where he's been trying to um date Adrian for the longest time and she's finally his lady or whatever and it, 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 that's all he cares about even though he just fought the biggest fight of his life he fought his heart out he barely barely just lost he doesn't give a crap about anything even that. that's not explained like why did he barely just lose i mean the whole third act i really had a problem with why did he barely just lose why isn't it set up and this is not because i'm used to modern filmmaking this is just storytelling why isn't it established why he's able to survive the fight because the second act is not like some magical second act where he just trains himself into it. He's just training like he trains and he gets Mickey, big shit. And he has some good music in the background no, and no, eats no, a no. bunch of egg yolks. No, no. Why his is... Training, his training goes like the next level and the level beyond that. And th- I think that's pretty clearly shown in the movie, right? At least it should have been foreshadowed, right? That he can somehow survive. That he finds something special within him to be able to survive with the world heavyweight champion. Because really what I came out of this thinking was like... Well, I guess Apollo Creed wasn't that great after all. He couldn't handle Rocky. I guess Rocky trained his way into surviving it. Great. I mean, but that's that's where that's where the whole story of Chuck versus Ali comes into play, right? It's the same situation. Chuck's he's still a boxer. Stallone's still a boxer. Rocky Balboa's still a boxer of pedigree. Again, you're talking about reality. Doesn't make for good cinema. I mean, it does not make for a good story that cleverly weaves in the emotional stakes and then makes me feel like, oh, like that's how he did it. Oh, he survived it. Oh, I didn't think he was going to. But he survived it. That's crazy. This movie just did not induce that at all because they didn't put in the work in the story. All I have to say for that is Butkus. Butkus. What a name, it, dude. What a name. I mean, we've discussed this already, but like the lines in the movie, the dialogues, everything is so real. Stuff like, uh, why do you... So Adrian asking him, like, when she's like, why do you fight then? Why do you want to fight? And he's like, because I can't sing or dance. Hey, yo, Right. Like, it's just amazing the way Stallone delivers The only thing I liked about that movie was how meta it was. It's like, why did Stallone make this movie? It's probably because he can't sing or dance. I mean, in the 70s, it was still close enough to, like, sing, dance Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, man. That's probably what he grew up thinking. I won't be able to sing and dance when I want to be an actor, so I'm going to box. 
it's yeah and you believed it i believed it sure sure okay and then the fact that he names his turtles cuff and link and and then mickey <laughs> so aristocrat yeah and then mickey comes to us like hey, what is that he's like those are my domestic turtles and he's like the one on top is cuff and the other is link the rest are all marbles you know what yo it's so good <laughs> everything he says is so good you're forgetting movie. the best line when mickey says they make good soup <laughs> <laughs> yeah they make good soup after that right oh, man i'm just i'm i'm done talking about how this movie was so accurate in terms of the reality it tried to portray and and how it did not focus only on the boxing to become a great movie and everything apart from the boxing is what made it a great movie and the boxing was just the icing on top i mean these guys actually boxed themselves there was no stunt actor or professional boxer doing the boxing it was carl weathers and silvester stallone going at it getting injured they both went to the hospital after shooting that final boxing match and it shows man the reality of it shows obviously there are ghost punches and you can make out it's 76 so there was only so much they could do but some of the wounds are actually real and that's tremendous i think respect respect and all of stallone's training in the movie was actually stallone training for a boxing match like the way he approached it was that i'm about to fight a big as boxing match and i need to train that way i mean the the work he put into it in terms of not just the story and the writing but the actual physical training was tremendous i think it was like so good and he actually pulled it off they both look like season boxers in the movie which is really really important sure sure i grant that i do grant that i just think overall this movie is super overrated for sure i think you know the writing is uh, probably considered really good because of the story behind it the characters are supposed to be real but they aren't you know they're kind of like the hacky super written versions of what these characters from the philly slum might be like it's like they just picked out all these characters from like a hat character mad libs or something like that and stallone man dude the guy the worst actor razzy of all <laughs> time you know this movie constantly branded him as the next brando could there be a bigger disappointment than that i just think you're biased against stallone because of all the shit stallone stuff you saw before you saw rocky so i don't blame you for that at all maybe maybe uh, i think i still stick to my point about this is definitely the best stallone movie acting wise that he's ever done and will ever do i can say that pretty confidently low bar my friend he set a <laughs> low bar and then constantly managed to go on the he just it. became an action star post that man like he just wanted the money Yeah, exactly why I won't be watching the other Rockies anytime soon. So before we wrap up here, I actually have a question for you. Okay. Uh this movie was 218. Oh, yeah, I forgot. At least it's at the bottom of the list makes sense. Right. Do you have a replacement? I actually know the answer to this already, but do you have a replacement? Yeah, you do. Oh man. No, wait a second. What do you think the answer is? No, no, no. Say it. No, no, no. What do you think the answer is? No, no. Nope. The Karate Kid? Nope. Real Steel? Nope. Finding Dory? Sanjay Dutt's 1981 <laughs> Rocky. <laughs> I completely forgotten that we touched upon that movie. <laughs> that movie on. touched upon me, my friend. <laughs> All right, so what do you say? Should we stop this feud? To quote Rocky, if you stop this feud, I'll kill you. So, that was this week's episode of Film Feud. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Thanks for listening to us box it out. If ever there was a time for a copyright infringement case to be slapped <laughs> on us, it's definitely for this one. And now, you guys, the listeners, get to decide who won. Tweet at us at Film Feud Pod and let us know who you think won. Let us know what arguments you might have made. Let us know how you're doing today. Yep, and also don't forget to subscribe at iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you guys listen to podcasts. And don't forget to watch Sanjay Dutt's Rocky from 1981. <laughs> Rocky, my name. Rocky, my name. Is that from the movie? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and now we can hop on to the exciting part of choosing the movie for the next episode. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Time for the film feud wheel. So we got number 115 up. <sighs> it's not up. <sighs> <laughs> it's not a Pepsi ad? No. Oh. It's actually Pixar's Up. Up starring an old guy <laughs> and a house and some balloons and a fat kid. <laughs> I actually haven't seen the movie. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, I watched it when it came out, so it's been um, I don't know like 7 8 years at least. I heard great things about it. I know it did really well critically and commercially and stuff. But... I remember You know what? I don't remember. Could be like it or not. Conveniently. It's been too long, 7 8 years. Up.
Interesting. I haven't seen an animated movie in a while, so this this would be an interesting. Oh, view. you're too good for animated movies. No, not at all. I I see animated shows all the time. Oh, you watch animated shows all the time. Oh, this voice is hard to stop doing. <laughs> okay, let's see how long you can do it for. I've seen Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty's awesome. And Archer. And Archer's awesome. And South Park. And South Park is quite good. <laughs> okay, okay. <clears throat> I'm back. Wow, that was a good good. Segue, voice segue, if that's a thing. Up, man. I'm, I'm pretty. I'm, I'm excited to watch the movie. I've heard a lot of stuff about it. Mostly good. I'm curious to see how it turns out. Me too. I haven't seen it in a while, and you know what? Pixar has been having its ups and downs since then. No pun intended. So I want to go back to like pre 2010 Pixar and see what it was all about. Yeah. See you guys next episode. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening.